when we think of the word hunger, one question comes to mind. What is real hunger? And how does real hunger feel? We all have had hunger pangs, and we are aware of the signal that our body gives our minds to tell us that we're hungry, a sharp pain that becomes paramount in our thoughts. And we are able to quell those signals because we have choices. But do we really know what severe hunger feels like? When for days there's absolutely no food available for people to get nourishment? Hunger is when the human mind is overwhelmed to the point of delirium. I recall my first day at Calvary's Mission Pantry as one that was not only eye-opening and emotional, but also very rewarding. I remember walking in very timidly, but with an open mind and an open heart. Before working at the pantry, my connection to wanting to end hunger was my experience volunteering at Hurricane Sandy relief effort. After serving and volunteering there, I felt even stronger about this platform because of everything that I witnessed and learned. The Calvary's Mission Pantry is staffed entirely by volunteers, some of whom are also the working poor. The Mission Pantry cannot operate without them. The volunteers and I come to work at 6 a.m. every Saturday morning, rain, sleet, snow, shine, any kind of weather, to prepare for the hundreds of people who are in need. Some of these volunteers have also accepted food from the pantry before, and now they realize it's time to give back. A prayer for guidance and thankfulness begins the day. Hundreds of people line up patiently outside of the pantry since dawn, and each one is given a ticket so that the pantry can have an accounting of the number of people they serve. The pantry is in need of monetary donations for this cause, but volunteering offers something a lot different than just giving some money. To be able to actually see the people you help, interact with them, hold their hands, laugh with them, hand them a parcel, offers a completely different experience. When people enter the food pantry after waiting in line for hours, they leave all of their pride outside at the gate. I say that because they are willing to come in and take food from someone else whom they might not even know without any compensation. And that's difficult. It's very tough to come to terms with the fact that you cannot provide food for yourself or your family and that you have to accept assistance from outside. It's the difference between starvation and life for many of these people and they all survive at the benevolence of strangers. While being wholeheartedly gracious and thankful, I can always see the defeated look on their faces for I know this is not an easy task for them. When humans lack this innate desire and ability to be providers, it's not an easy notion to accept. For some, it could actually be crippling. Whatever the story is, it's one of urgency. I try to always be bright and cheery in the hope that I can make them smile, even if for a moment, to forget their troubles. They are so thankful, it breaks my heart. But it also mends it, because I know that I'm allowed able, willing, and blessed enough to be able to help people. The children with their mothers, I always see them. I see the happiness in their face when you hand them something, and it's that kind of kindness that's very rare to come by. What does Calvary's mission mean to this neighborhood, Little Guyana? I try to find out. Hi, I would like to know a little bit about your involvement in Calvary's mission and your personal story. I started coming to this place when I lost my job and it was very difficult for me to find food for my family. And so many things run through my mind I could have done, you know, but it wasn't right. So I went there and I get 10 pound potato, 10 pound onion and a turkey and some other stuff, bananas, milk and stuff. So when I get home, I was so overwhelmed, I started to cry because I, I felt joy, you know? And I said, hey, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to steal or prostitute or anything, you know? I get food, thank God. So then the boy said, listen, you don't need to come and collect. We need workers. So then I start to work with them and put in these bags every week. And then I get back my job, thank God. And since then, my heart is at this place to come every Saturday. Whether I'm sick, I don't feel good, come every Saturday make certain my hand, my labors in here to put in the bags of people because somebody's going through what I went through. Calvary's mission needs money 
to function. I wanted to bring awareness to this fact and raise something of my own to give back. To this end, I held a fundraiser dinner event where people could come, mingle, learn about the pantry, learn about how they could volunteer, and also be aware of the tremendous work that goes into what we do each week. Mr. Tony Singh, who is the director of the Calvary's Mission Pantry, was extremely thankful. In his words, these funds will bring relief to thousands of persons at the pantry. It's a great feeling. My plan is to continue to raise funds and bring consciousness to the need to join the fight to eradicate hunger, not only in Richmond Hill, not only in Guyana, but also worldwide. Thank you.